Hi, my name is Fabian and I'm back to give you guys some more tips on how to expand your family tree, especially if you're doing research for Mexican ancestors. And I know it's been a while since I did my last video, but it takes me a long time to try to pile up the information, record the video, edit the video, and then post that online. So I have to find some time to do that and I guess this weekend is that time for this one. And as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the resources that I use to help me expand my family tree. And I hope you guys find them beneficial. The first few resources, uh, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard about already. But some of the other resources, I believe, that even some of you more experienced researchers haven't heard about. So I'm really excited to share those with you guys today. Where I do most of my research, and I mentioned this before in my other videos, is Ancestry.com and FamilySearch.org. I have my tree on Ancestry.com just because I like the look and feel of it better. I like those little hints to help you find other relatives. And I also did my DNA results with them, so it's all synced together. And FamilySearch.org is where I do most of my research. So on my website, I have a section where you can find all the civil and church records for every state in Mexico. They're all linked to FamilySearch.org, but I find it easier to go through that. Sometimes FamilySearch.org is not the most intuitive tool. So if you guys want to do that, or you can just go to FamilySearch.org. So what I do is pick my home state, mine is Michoacan, and either civil or church records, and then pick a film and browse through there and try to find my hometown and my, uh, my family last names for the jurisdiction that I'm looking at. Because what I find is that a lot of these small towns with your last name and you'll find that a lot of people are related in one way or another. So, and if they're not um, indexed or transcribed yet, you can do your own research that which is browsing through the documents. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it really is. And once you get it, get the hang of it. So the other resource that I want to share with you guys today, this one's a little bit more fun. This one is a Facebook group and it's called Mexican Genealogy. And what I like about this group is I know a lot of us who are from the States or from other parts of the world don't know how to speak uh, or read Spanish. I do, but I'm, I have a lot of people like, I wish I could do more, but I just, I don't know how to read uh, some of these documents. So what I find on here, a lot of people will get one of those documents that they believe has, has their ancestors, or they know they have their ancestors, but they can't read the whole thing and they need some help transcribing it. So they'll post that document on here and within two minutes, you have like six or seven people deciphering it and giving you their opinion on what they think is on there. There's also people asking for help trying to find lost relatives or posting pictures of their ancestors and just asking for just general advice. Hey, I'm from this hometown in Mexico, from this small town in Mexico. Um, is anyone else from there? Or this is my last name from this area. Am I related to anyone on here? And then people will respond and help each other out. So I think it's it's a great tool, especially for a lot of us or a lot of you guys who don't know how to read or um, speak in Spanish. And they also have subgroups for each state in Mexico. So I joined this Mexican genealogy group, the main one, and I also joined the one for Michoacan. And the one in Michoacan, I was able to help a few people expand their family tree. Uh, but just if they have a question or... I posted, hey, this is where I'm from, and some people are like, well, I'm from there too. We private message each other, and I was able to help them expand their tree and help them decipher some of these documents because I see them all the time, and I'm pretty good at reading through some of this um, chicken scratch. So the next resource I'm going to be sharing with you guys is called Valladolid Dispensas, which means dispensations from Valladolid. And I should give you guys a little disclaimer. Every source from here on out deals with the state of Michoacan, and that makes sense, right? I'm from Michoacan, that's why I'm focusing my research. But hopefully you guys can pick up some keywords and ideas and find something similar for your home state by me showing you what I found and these other sources that you can use. If you're Michoacan, this is perfect for you because um, maybe a lot of you guys don't know about these yet. So this website here by Loli Dispensas, what they do is they also kind of browse through the family search um, records that haven't been transcribed or indexed yet. And they read through them and they index them for you. So they do the work for you. So they tell you um, what, the, what the record is about, who it involves, the jurisdiction where it's from, 
and the image number and where you can find that in the film. So let me give you an example here. They don't have the best search tool. Um, so you're going to have to play with it for a little bit. But if I go to search and I'm going to search my one of my family last names, which is one thing, and it's a unique last name. Um, so I can almost be sure that if I find a one thing from me, check on, especially for my jurisdiction, it's going to be a relative of mine. So once you type one thing and you just go look through the search, you go down and browse through the, um, the results that it gives you. And here I find a Silvestre Manuel del Guante and Maria Rosalia from Sacapo. Sacapo is the jurisdiction that I'm from, and that's a Guante. So I'm pretty sure that was someone that it's going to be related to me. And I know he's related to me because I already did this. And that's my sixth great grandfather. And at the beginning, it'll, it'll show you um, what image in the film that's located. So you open up the film right above where you, the search results came from. And then you're just going to type 21 in the search, uh, in the little search um, box there. And it'll take you to the actual document. So this isn't transcribed yet, and it's not indexed on familysearch.org. But this group did that for you. So you just go on there and kind of search for your last names or jurisdictions, and it'll come up here. And here you'll find um, Silvestre Manuel del Guante con Maria Rosalia. It's an engagement record. They're trying to get dispensation so they can get married. And what I discovered here, I discovered their parents. I discovered they were free mulatos and their approximate age. So that helps me grow and expand my family tree. So I think that dispensations for Viola Lee is a great tool. And hopefully there's something similar in your state that um, has a similar website like this. And another really cool thing about this website, um, they have several issues that they deal with. They deal with people suing other people for not, um, they were engaged and they didn't get married. There's people suing over debts, people suing over their freedom as slaves from their slave owner. There was a man suing a slave owner for their, for him beating up his wife. Um, and there's also people from all over the world here. I shouldn't say all over the world, there's certain areas of the world. Besides Spain and Portugal, I found people that were from Africa and more specifically Angola. Um, Ireland, the Canary Islands, the Philippines, um, Italy. So all these people ended up in Michoacan and some of this information isn't available where well, you can find it if you browse through all the documents on familysearch.org and we're never going to do that. But this group is, I think it's a group of volunteers and they're doing this for us. So they did the work for us. We just have to go and search um, through their records and see if you can find some ancestors of yours. So the next few resources I'm going to be sharing with you guys are books and i don't think we we do a lot of research on books anymore but there's a lot of, of books that i found that have some genealogical records i don't know if i said that right but for example since i have this one in my hand this one is called familias y casas de la vieja valladolid i remember valladolid was that former capital of michoacan now known as morelia and this has all the families and the houses these are the, the wealthy well-known rich families um, that came from Spain and Portugal and France that lived in Valladolid. And what they'll have on here, they'll have like the family seal. This is for Ponce de Leon. They'll give you a, a quick history on where the family comes from, who's like the patriarch or the matriarch of that family. And they just give you a little brief history. They come from um, the Ponce de Leons from Mexico. These come from Toulouse in France. Tolosa, France. I, I think I butcher that, but I think it's Tolosa, France. And then they'll have like, they'll go like the parents, then their children, and then the children's children. And it's a great book for um, finding ancestor that way. I found on here in the Ponce de Leon, it was my ninth great grandparents. And then I was able to trace it back all the way to Spain. And I guess, although I haven't traced it all the way to Tol Tolosa, France, but it goes all the way. Um, that's where they say the family originally originated from. A little redundant there, but that's one of those books. And look, this one um, hasn't been checked in a long time. It's really moldy, and but it has great information. And I'll show you guys how to get these um, for free. So that's one. 
here's another one. This one is called Repertorio Michoacano from 1889 to 1926. This is basically the who's who of uh, Michoacan from those years. And what I like about this one is that not only does it have like, um, it's not as in depth as the one that I just shared with you guys today, but it'll have, um, it'll tell you like where, who the person was, where were they born, sometimes their family, their parents, their kids. And what I like about this, it also has pictures. It has pictures of the people that were from Michoacan. And I'm sure if you're, if you're from Michoacan, someone has to be on here that was related to you. Um, not just because you're from Michoacan, but I'm sure somebody will find relatives on here and they'll find pictures of their relatives. So it has like um, poets, politicians, um, priests, um, political parties, newspapers, everything of like the who's who of Michoacan during th this time. That's another one. Some of the other ones, I, I have quite a few books and I put this on the description. I have a few books that um, I was not allowed to take from the library. So what I do there, I have a, an app that I can just scan the books and it scans it automatic, automatically. It OCRs the document so I can just search the PDF after I'm done. And I wish I could share these with you guys, but I'm not sure how the copyright issues work. But if I tell you some of the names of these books, you guys can go and search for them. Oh, and what I like about this too, is that they have a, a lot of these have a bibliography. So you can, um, I don't know if this one does. Yeah, so it has a bibliography of where they got their information from. So now you have all these other sources that you can go and find more information on these people. So the other books that I have, another one is um, Propietarios y Esclavos Negros and Valladolid de Michoacán from 1600 to 1650. These are the the slaves and the slave owners during that time. And the, the one, that sixth great grandfather, Silvestre Manuel Guante, it said that he was a free mulatto. So I haven't gone back to 1600, 1650, but maybe if I trace my, my, my roots further back, maybe he, at one point there were enslaved mulattoes or enslaved black people. Uh, but I'll find that with more research. But that's another book, and I've gone through this one. Um, I started reading this one because I actually want to read this whole one. Like these other ones, I just want to search for certain keywords or certain people because it's not something to read. But with this one, I do want to read this book, and I haven't um, had time to quite go through it yet. And this one, this is one of the keywords I want you guys to keep in mind because you know how we have the 1930 Mexican census, and we're like, well, where are the other censuses at? Um, and they're not available to us. But the word padrones, which means it's like a register, a census. The church used to do these every single year. Um, they would have people confess and get their um, communion. And then they'll do these padrones, all these registers, basically a census. And this one is called Partidos y Padrones del Obispo de Michoacán from 1680 to 1685. So this is basically a census for that time. But it's based on jurisdiction by jurisdiction. For example, I'm gonna to go to the jurisdiction that I'm from, and you're gonna see that there's not a lot of information. But what you will see is, first I'll give you a, a description of the jurisdiction, and then you can go and look at, I'm just waiting for this to load. And then you can go and actually look at the little census they did there. As you can tell, there's not a lot of valuable information on here. It just says how many indigenous people were here, Spaniards, Mestizos, Mulatos, and the, the total for the year 1681. So you're like, well, that's not going to help me expand my family tree. But if you look at a different jurisdiction, this one is um, Huicuilpa, and I'm pretty sure I butcher that, now known as Huicuilpa, Huicuilpan. <laughs> I'm sorry for butchering that. But again, I'll give you a quick little description there. And if you look at their, um, their little um, register, here they'll tell you the, who the head of the household was, their wife, their kids, and it, it breaks it down into more detail. So it's, it's a more detailed census register than the other one. So it just depends by jurisdiction from jurisdiction. 
So those padrones only covers from the year from 1680 to 1685. But I'm going to show you guys how to find more. And they're on familysearch.org. So you can go to my site because that's where I go because it's just easier for me to use. And click on the church and civil records. And then scroll down to your state. Mine is Michoacan. So I'm going to click on Michoacan. And find out what the um, archdiocese was for your state. And then search for that. So for me, it was Valladolid before, but it's known as Morelia now. So I'm just going to go to Morelia. And then you click on your archdiocese. It might be a few there, but just find, just play with it until you find the correct one. And then once you're there, type the word padrones. And here, once I type that, I have a lot more. They're from 1668 all the way down to 1896. So there's a huge range of padrones. And what you would do on there, you would click on that, find your jurisdiction, and then go through them. And then a lot of some of those are very detailed, like as, as you saw from Huicuiplan, Huicuiplan, that that one. And some weren't as detailed as the one from my jurisdiction was from Sagapo. But if you look at other ones, they change depending on who the priest is during the time. So that's a, a key word for you guys to look out for. Now, you're probably wondering where I got all these books and I told you you can get it for free. So to find those books, what I, what I do, I go to Google Books and then I type like the keywords that I told you right now. So I'm going to type Michoacan Padrones. I scroll down, I see it. You can click on the book and it'll tell you probably where you can find it. Um, or sometimes Google has some of these books that are for free. So you can just see them that way. But what I like to do is copy the, the title and go to worldcat.org. And worldcat.org basically tells you where these books, which libraries have these books. So I'm just going to type the the title of the book and there it is I'll click on it and then it'll tell you which libraries have this you type your zip code and they'll tell you which libraries close by do you have this book this one um, actually came from a library in Phoenix and you're like well how did you get it from a library in Phoenix well there is a program from that the libraries a lot of the libraries you use called the interlibrary loan program and you just call your local library up and say hey do you guys participate in this program and if they do you just tell them what book you're looking for they'll ask you like what's the title who's the publisher um who's the author you'll give them that information they'll post this on their interlibrary loan program some other library will send them to send them to your library and you can go and get it for free and then you can check it out. That's how I got this book. Sometimes these books aren't available for sale online. And if they are, they're really expensive. For example, this one I think was either 400 or 800 bucks. I know that's a big range, but that's, I was like, well, I'm not going to buy that book. And what if there's something invaluable in there? This one actually came from Penn State. Um, I found that I saw it on here on worldcat.org that it was at Penn State. I called them and I had them transferred over here to one of their satellite campuses and went and picked it up right there. I'm going to take this back. So hopefully if you guys are interested in this book, I already OCR'd it so I can search through it. I don't need the book anymore. That way you guys can also use this. And like I said, this one was from Phoenix. And the one from Partido San Padrones, that one's actually from um, the University of Penn here in Pennsylvania. They wouldn't let me check that book out, but I went there and scanned it. So a lot of these you can get for free. And you, if you scan them and OCR them, then you can search for them at home, like just another searchable document, which I think is great. So those are the records. Those are the ones that I think a lot of you guys weren't familiar with and how to find them. And hopefully some of these tools that I showed you, some of these keywords will help you guys find more records and more books and even a website. And if you guys learn something new, let me know if, if some of these were new to you or and if you like the video, share this with friends and family and other people doing research. Uh, for Mexican ancestors. And if you have other books or other resources that aren't as common out there, put them in the comments below. Help other people. I think it's very important. Like if I help you guys, you, you guys help me. We help each other grow our family trees. 
So that's all I have for now. And I can't wait to do my other video. It might take another few months, but I'll get that up as well.